Newcastle have done it. They have officially qualified for next season's Champions League. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. Yes, today's video we are focusing on Newcastle United, Eddie Howe, Callum Wilson, everybody in between. For as Newcastle last night secured their place in the top four and secured their spot in next season's Champions League. Champions League football is returning to St. James's Park 20 years after the last ball in the Champions League uh, was kicked. An incredible season, a phenomenal season created by Eddie Howe on this Newcastle side. And in this video, we are going to give them the, the recognition and praise that they deserve and also talk about where their expectations may take them uh, for future seasons to come. But before we go any further, I would like to remind you all to please like the video and also subscribe if you're new. Both things are always and be greatly appreciated. And I also encourage you to get involved in the comments section as well. I know you have plenty of thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you want to call it, on Newcastle, the season that has been for them, and obviously for future seasons to come. And I'm sure that it'll make for great and interesting reading down below in that comment section. So do get involved down there. But without further ado, let's get on with the video. Let's talk Newcastle United because it's been an absolute phenomenal season by Eddie Howe and his Newcastle side. Incredible. Nobody, I don't think, predicted Newcastle to get top four. Nobody predicted that a Newcastle side that 18 months ago was battling relegation when obviously Eddie Howe came in. The Saudi takeover was just about beginning. A new era was on the horizon. No one was expecting them to get Champions League football this early on in this whole sort of big project kind of feel that Newcastle were going were going to go through right now. Plans have certainly escalated because of what Eddie Howe and Newcastle have managed to achieve this season. And look. I say that they probably wouldn't expect to get top four because obviously at the beginning of the season, many people were not predicting the fall off of the likes of Chelsea and Liverpool. But full credit to what Newcastle have done. They've just gone about their business this season. They've overrode some tough challenges, some tough points of the season. It's been an extremely long season as it is, simply for the reason it feels long because obviously we had the, the, the mid-season break of the World Cup. But they have overperformed and overachieved this season. And that's not to kind of tarnish or, or say anything bad about how Newcastle have been. But like I say, nobody expected Newcastle at this early on in their project, in, in their kind of uh, big picture kind of feel for the way that this club was going to go, the direction this club was going to go in in years to come. No one was expecting them to get top four this early. And like I say, they have managed to bring back Champions League football for the first time in 20 years at St. James's Park. And let's be real, Champions League night at St. James's Park is going to be absolutely incredible to watch. And I, I personally, obviously my team is going to be in the Europa League next season. So personally, I, I'm going to be watching Newcastle very closely in that in that Champions League, just for the atmosphere, the buzz, and the excitement alone, it's going to be absolutely incredible to watch from afar. But it's well deserved. It is absolutely well deserved. They have been very consistent throughout the majority of this season. They had an unbelievable start. Uh, I remember putting out a video saying, "Could they get top four? And my answer to that was, "Absolutely, they could." Depended. I, I thought it. I thought it depended mainly on who they brought in in January. I didn't think the squad was big enough or had the depth to go the entire way through the season uh, as consistently as what they were doing. But I was wrong. Like they didn't really. Apart from Anthony Gordon, who didn't really have that big of an impact in the second half of the season, in my opinion. They didn't really spend that much in January and they played very well throughout and they were incredible. The defence was solid and consistent. They had one of the be best defensive records this season. Their attack was scoring plenty of goals, particularly um, in, in the first half and, the, and, and, the, uh, and the, the kind of back end of the season was scoring plenty of goals. 
I think Callum Wilson's got something like 18 goals in 29 appearances or something along those lines. He's been incredible for, for Newcastle throughout. Alexander Izak, the new signing uh, coming in, the big new signing uh, from the summer. He's got 10 goals this season in his debut season in the Premier League. He's been brilliant for Newcastle as well. And then you look further back. The midfield's been pretty solid. Uh, Miguel Almiron on the wing. Uh, he hit a big purple patch when Newcastle needed it most. There was a bit of a, there was a, there, uh, after the World Cup, I think there was a bit of a dip in form of Newcastle where they struggled a little bit and they went in a bit out of form. And he really stepped up when Newcastle needed it most. And he's not exactly a world class talent by any stretch of the imagination, um, but at the same time, he was an important player. For Newcastle at that moment in getting them uh, the goals that they needed to continue their their strong start to the season and obviously push them to get to where they were I and mean, you need players like that that are going to do that. Joe Linton this season has been absolutely excellent playing out of his skin and he needed it really because obviously with the big money that he came in for before uh, before obviously the takeover Coming in as a striker, people were questioning who, what does this guy bring? Is this guy really that good? Is he actually any good at all? And to be fair, there was a lot of question marks over his performances. But Eddie Howe's come in, transformed him into a central midfielder, and now he's brilliant. He is excellent. Joe Willock came in at certain points of the season, played very well. Bruno Guimaraes, absolutely phenomenal. I, I love this player. He's an excellent talent as a, as a creative player, as a workhorse player, as a ball winner. He is a, a very good all-round midfielder and, again, shows you the kind of levels and brilliant recruitment that Newcastle have gone to to spend their money wisely. Defensively, Dan Byrne as a, as a left back, brilliant. Kieran Trippier, solid. Sven Botman, unbelievable. Sven Botman, debut season again in the Premier League, has been excellent in that Newcastle back line, and for me has been one of the standout players of the season, um, and has clearly transformed that Newcastle back line to be as solid as what they are right now. And as uh, and like I say been very consistent throughout the entirety of the season and in my opinion deserves a kind of spot in I guess you'd say the team of the season uh, I mentioned in a video before when talking about young player of the season that obviously Harlan probably is head and shoulders above the rest but at the same time if he's going to get the main one and you want to give a kind of consolation prize to like second place for the young player I definitely think he should be within contender of that. I think he's been absolutely brilliant in his debut season and obviously he's still relatively young so he can still continue to grow and get even better in this division and as and as a footballer as a whole. And then Nick Pope in goal. Again, another solid piece of business. He's been brilliant for the majority of this season as well. Newcastle as a whole have been excellent and... The question now is, is that where does their expectation levels go? Newcastle fans, for the majority of it, I think, have been enjoying the ride. Like I say, I don't think even they were predicting themselves to get into the top four this season. But I think they've been just enjoying the ride for what it is. They've been blown away by how well and how consistently their team has performed. And fair play to each and every one of them. But now... Where does that expectation level go? Because you've accelerated. You've got into the fast lane a little bit in terms of this project. You've got into a position where you weren't expected to be in for another two, three years. Where do you go from here? What's the next step? Obviously, trophies is the obvious end goal. But what about next season? Is it just a case of maybe challenging for a few trophies and maybe trying to maintain your top four status? If you get fifth, maybe, it's not necessarily a bad season because you've also got Champions League football to contend with for the next campaign, so it means more games, more intense games at that. Where do you go from here? It's going to be interesting. Their recruitment has to, again, be on point. It's been brilliant so far, and they've and 
theoretically, they've barely spent anything. I mean, yes, they have spent money, but they spent it very wisely. And you could argue that for the prices and, and the price tags that they spent these players on, they relatively should have been the kind of players and price tags that they should have spent money on under the previous ownership of Mike Ashley, obviously, if he'd have pulled his finger out a bit more. So, they have spent money, but maybe it's well-spent money. It's not the crazy amounts of money like your 60, 70, 80 million pound players, your 90 million pound players, your 100 million pound players, but it's been spent wisely. What was it? 35 million, I think, on, on Grimorage, or, or 25 million, somewhere in that ballpark. You, you got like, uh, what, uh, was it 20 million or something on Pope, something along them lines. Um, Isaac was obviously a, a big price, admittedly. 45 million on Anthony Gordon. Again, I, I, I don't really rate Gordon that highly, but, you know, he, he could still prove me wrong. We'll have to wait and see. It's going to be interesting to see where this where where this takes Newcastle next. Champions League football obviously is a massive pull. A club like Newcastle, which is a bit of a sleeping giant over the past few years, is obviously a, a, a bit of a pull as well. Where do they go from here? Because there is this side is upgradable by all means. I do think that there there can be some improvements made. Um, and I think obviously for next season, given the fact that they've, got, that they've now obviously obtained Champions League football, their squad does need beefing up a bit in terms of depth, in terms of maybe quality in certain aspects. For example, Dan Byrne at left back, will that be sustainable going forward? He's been excellent this season. Is that sustainable going forward? Is Miguel Almiron's position at right wing not upgradable just certain areas like that i'm not i'm not trying to put a dampener on things i'm not trying to call into question certain aspects of, the, of this team i'm just saying that with obviously success with obviously accelerating so fast into a position where you weren't expected to be there for another few years or so maybe the expectations are uh, will slowly start to change and maybe the demand of success even more so will obviously take a hold uh, of, of this Newcastle side I would just say that maybe if they go about their business the way they have been doing it will be a process and it will be a successful one you know there's, there's talk about superstar names coming in there's, there's always going to be rumours and whispers about that especially when you have the money to do that the likes of Neymar for example and let's face it Neymar playing in the black and white of Newcastle, in the Champions League, in the Premier League itself, just as a whole, is incredible to think about. But will that actually happen? Is that what Eddie Howe and Newcastle want? Is he the type of player that they want? It's alright signing the superstar names, but will they actually go with Eddie Howe's style of play? Not too sure, to be honest. As long, if it works, it works. If it doesn't... There's no point in trying in trying to sign players of that calibre if it's just for the name itself, for the marquee signing, for a statement signing. Because it may not work out. It may not be the way it is. And just then a quick word on Eddie Howe as well. Look, if it weren't for Pep Guardiola and the phenomenal achievement that he's possibly on the verge of achieving this season in terms of not only just completing the three-peat in terms of the Premier League, but also on the verge of adding the FA Cup and the Champions League winners uh, medals to his collection, the trophies to his collection, and obviously completing the infamous big treble in the Premier League. He would definitely be, in my mind, Premier League manager of the season. He's been phenomenal. He's been excellent. The way that he's gone about his business changed Newcastle Changed them from the relegation battling team 18 months ago to obviously now being in the Champions League 18 months later. It's, it's incredible. And like I say, it's just a bit of a shame that obviously Pep Guardiola and Manchester City have gone on to achieve bigger things, unfortunately for Newcastle, in other competitions that otherwise he, in my opinion, 
will be the Premier League manager of the season. But a fantastic achievement by Newcastle, uh, an incredible achievement by Eddie Howe, and I hope that Newcastle continue on this upwards trajectory because they're doing it. They're doing it brilliantly. They're doing it right, and I. I cannot wait to see Newcastle in Champions League action next season. I cannot wait to see how they continue to grow and evolve as a club and uh, and and uh, and as a squad and everything that goes along with that. And yeah, I'm 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 interested to see where this Newcastle side goes going forward. How the expectation level changes going forward. What the expectation level is going to be for next season, especially with obviously obtaining Champions League football and everything. I'm 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 interested and invested in this Newcastle story and this Newcastle development. I, I I cannot wait to see how it grows and evolves. But those are just the thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you want to call it, of this guy. I want to know what you guys think. What do you make of Newcastle United, the season that has been, and of course Newcastle's expectations and demands going forward. I'd love to know what you guys think, you feel, your thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you want to call it, down below in the comment section because I'm sure it'll make for interesting reading. Otherwise, hit the like button the way up and enjoy the video. Subscribe if you're new or want to see more content like this. Both things always and forever be greatly appreciated. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening. I've been Fletch. This has been another Fletch Talks video. Congratulations once again to Newcastle United. A fantastic achievement this season. And I will see you in sweet view all again soon in another video.